Hello, and in this video, we're going to be creating a pen housing assembly. It's going to involve using a sub assembly we've already created uh, with that cartridge assembly. Uh, so, first, I'm going to start by inserting, and I'm going to start by inserting that housing. That's a big component we want. Uh, at the same time, I'm going to insert my separator, and I'll also insert my spring. I don't know why it's not selling you the spring, but I'm also going to insert those springs. Uh, in this case, I'm going to need four springs. I could have put that in my sub-assembly, but the way I'm going to connect it, I want to do it in the housing. Uh, so we get those four springs. And then finally, we need to add in our assembly for our pen. Uh, so we want to make sure we hit that drop down and we pick the different colorations we want. So I'm going to do my blue one first. Uh, then I'll do my red one. And you got to select it each time. Uh, then I'll do my green one. And then finally, we do the black one. And again, we select it and place it out there. So now we have the parts we need. So I'm going to hit the green check to accept. That way, they don't disappear. And I'm going to start with this uh, separator. Uh, so I'm going to do a fasten mate on that one. I want to get the back side, the open side to it. It's kind of hard to see that it's open in the blackness. Uh, but the open side, and we want it going up to the uh, end of the threads, where that thread ends. We have a green check to accept, and that places it. Uh, you can't see it right now, but if you turn off the visibility on your housing, uh, then you'll be able to see it. And you can see the flat side is on the back. Again, with the black col coloration, it's a little more difficult to see. Uh, next, we're going to work on our springs. I've already added a uh, mate service to this, but I'll show you uh, how I went about doing that. Uh, so to do that, I went to my springs. I'll just right click on any of them, and I want to go to that part studio with the springs. Uh, once in the spring, I selected sketch one, and all I did was make a point on that origin. Once you have that point, we can hit our green check to accept, and the next step is going to involve adding what's called a make connector. So once it loads in, uh, we come up to this make connector on the top, and I turned off click that make connector and we can go right on that surface there. I've already made mine so I'm not going to make a new one but you just got to make sure that arrows, the blue arrow, the blue lines pointing up and down when you do so. And that's how you add in that make connector. Uh, so now I'm going to go back to my housing assembly and once it loads in uh, we're going to use that make connector we created to insert the spring right on top of the separator. Uh, physically, you wouldn't be able to do this, but since uh, we're doing it on the computer, we can do the, it kind of out of order, is what I'd say. Uh, so I'm going to turn off the housing so we can see the separator more clearly. And all I would do is a fasten mate. I'm going to get that mate connector I created, and then I'm going to put it right on the top of my separator. And I'm going to repeat this process for each of my four springs. Uh, I will keep all of those on the video. Uh, sometimes I try to take them out just to save time for you. Uh, but we do that same process on all four of them. And then we'll, next we'll turn on the visibility and get to our uh, sub-assembly addition. Uh, so again, we want to be on a fasten, make connected to the spring, and the separator. Uh, then the last one, I get the spring. And I'm going to rotate it around so I can see what the hole it goes on to. And we want to go on top of that hole. Uh, we got all four springs on. They're all in the right location. So I'm going to zoom out and turn my housing back on. Once I have my housing back on, then we can start working on our sliders. Uh, I'm going to turn my view just a little bit to make it easier for you to see. Uh, and these are sliders. So I'm going to do a slider constraint on them. Slider make. Uh, I'll hit the X and make sure I turn my housing back on, and then I'm going to select the slider mate. I'm going to zoom in so you can see I'm selecting this outside kind of back corner, and once we go in the housing, we want to see where that connects to. Uh, this time it can be a little hard to click and get it facing the right direction, but I want to be on this edge of my housing, and I want the blue line, the blue arrow, so in the direction it's going to slide, uh, to be facing downward. So that one can be a little tricky. Uh, depending on what we're, we're coming off of, what, what direction it's facing. Uh, we want it facing out and down. Uh, sometimes it's more useful to do a make connector beforehand so you can get it facing the right direction, but now I got it facing the right direction. Uh, it just flipped around, so I can easily flip it, and then I can rotate it. 
and it was facing the right way. Uh, but you can use the rotation uh, tool to get it lined up once you click the right location. I'm going to hit my green check to accept. And right now, obviously, we don't have it exactly how we want it, uh, but we're close to how we need it. Uh, we got to set some limits to get it able to slide in the right location. So I'm going to slide it down. Up. I didn't fix my housing in place. Usually I do that at the beginning. Uh, but right click on the housing and we want to fix it in place so that doesn't move as we try to move our slider. So now that I got that fixed in place, I'm going to go back to slider one and I'm going to edit that. I'm going to look straight on so I can see exactly where I'm at and we want to slide it down. Maybe. And I didn't fix it in place. Uh, so we want to make sure we fix the housing in place. And then we should be able to slide the slider without moving our housing. And we can. Uh, so I'm going to look at it straight on from the top view. And then I'm going to hit slider 1 to edit. And I'm going to set some limits. Uh, so right now it's at my zero point. Obviously that's way too high. Uh, I want it so just inside the top when it clicks in. So I want it just clicked in on the top and you should be able to see a value. It gives us a value of 0.3 down here. So you can see that 0.3 value. That's going to be my minimum. And again, I'm just estimating these. We could measure them and get those exact values. Also, I'm going to go back and fill at these edges. We didn't do that when we created the object, but those are rounded on the, those edges. Uh, then when I move it down all the way down to the base, we get 0.85, so I'm going to type in 0.85 in that case. Again, I'm just estimating those. Uh, you can hit play to sell it in motion. It goes in and out. I do know at the bottom it's not going to quite go how, exactly how we want, but in this case, that's going to be good enough for what we want. Uh, but that moves up and down. Uh, so that's what we're looking for on the slider. You're going to repeat that same process for each of the uh, other sliders. I'm not going to sit here and go through each one on the video for you. It's the exact same process on the other three. Just make sure you're going around the housing. Uh, for this next step, I'm going to turn off these make connectors. Uh, you could go to the uh, part and just do it that way. My internet's been having some issues when I open a new part back up. So I'm just going to do it real quick on here by opening, expanding each one out and just turning off the visibility on those make connectors. Uh, then when we turn to our front, we want to see if our make our separator is lined up appropriately, and it's not. So we're going to have to go back to that first fasten we did and edit that. Uh, we want to offset it and rotate it around, and it looks like it's going to rotate around a 45 degree. And we want to make sure we're going around the right axis, which is going to be the Z axis. Uh, once you do that, the ink cartridge should line up with the hole in your separator, and it does in this case. Uh, we hit our green check to accept, and that updates that. Uh, then we'd go through and add each one of the separators the same way we did our black one. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and do all of that in this video for you, but again, slide in May. You get that edge. Make sure your blue arrow is facing down, and we want that back edge. And then we have to find where it goes and get it lined up on that make connector. So once you get them all uh, lined up, get them in place. Again, if it's not lined up, if it's not facing the correct direction, you can rotate it around. Green check. And that puts it in the place. And we still have to set our limit. So again, we want to set our limit, slide it in, and set those limits. Uh, it should be the same values as our last one. I don't remember exactly what they were. 0 0.3 up, 0 0.3 I think, and 0.85 if I remember correctly. I'll hit enter and we'll play and see if that's not where we want it to go. Oh, that's for a new one. I didn't edit the one I did. Uh, we want to edit the one we already had with limits uh, 0 0.3 and 0 0.85. If I remember correctly, hit play and it should show it going down and back up. So that's what we're looking for. Uh, repeat that same process on your last two and you'll be able to finish up your uh, housing sub assembly. Thank you and good luck.